to get the prime spots for this game. Just an incredible atmosphere, Sean. I think you'd have to rank it as one of the best student sections in the sport. Hey, you look at the camera crazies, Utah State, one of the best in choreography for a student section. Uh, the rich tradition of Kansas, the is own at Michigan State. There's a lot of great basketball environments. The zoo at Pittsburgh would be one of those that you also think about, but really Gonzaga has built a unique environment and when you talk to Mark Few he so often points out the community aspect of Spokane and this is when Gonzaga basketball is on pretty much everything in town stops people start paying attention they come out they support the team at the restaurants they're talking to you about it they love their Bulldogs here in Spokane and for good reason what a program that Mark Few has and he's Kids, part of the kennel, part of this great student section, are going to have lots of exciting chances even before the WCC season begins. That's because year in and year out, Mark Few goes out and he schedules one of the more difficult schedules out of conference of anybody in the country. I mean, there's some really difficult schedules in college basketball, but they their winning percentage is third best since 2004 2005 for the highest home court winning percentage Utah State you see up there at 96 percent and probably no surprise those four teams teams you highlighted with some of the best student fans in college hoops big reason why the Bulldogs are so tough to beat here on this floor David Stockton floater was too strong there's Sam Dower nice offensive rebound but another miss kind of rushed that shot a little bit his feet weren't necessarily set no look pass and a good one for the layup in transition and now a steal by Jared Grant at Notre Dame Up and under move and another basket for Tom Knight. The Fighting Irish have this game down to single digits. We showed you the evaporating leads that we've seen in the second half in the early stage of the season for Gonzaga. And right now, Notre Dame has made a difference in the second half of not turning the ball over quite as much as we saw in the first half. They're giving themselves opportunities to score. And they're forcing real tough shots. Harris with a good offensive rebound with the foul. A second chance opportunities. That's one way to kill a run. And Elias Harris doing some nice work underneath. As the first shot goes up, watch how many times Harris jumps to try to get his hands on the ball. Very great activity, ability to fight and scrap the claw board. He's, he's on his way to a double double. Chance for the three point play here. Stops a little Notre Dame run. Almost. That double double that Sean's talking about. 11 points, 9 rebounds, 12 point lead for Gonzaga. And Notre Dame much better here in the second half. Gonzaga suffered with Sacre on the bench. He's back on the floor. Gonzaga suffered while their big man was out. Grant was open, didn't shoot the three. Got to pull the trigger when it's that wide open from the outside. Cooley in and out. Offensive rebound. The freshman, Connaughton, missed the short shot. Pangos shoots the three. No hesitation from the freshman. Grant hesitates a wide open three-point shot after you've already got the ball inside and got a touch and thrown it back out. The hesitation that end, the freshman for Gonzaga, no hesitation and nothing but nylon. Three point play for Harris, three point bucket for Pangos. Lead back to 49 34. Martin, who is a lefty, no good. What a tough night it's been for him. Now Pangos called for the foul. I mentioned the no hesitation from Pangos. He had nine three pointers to tie the school record here on the tip off marathon against Washington State. On the catch, his feet were set. He was ready to fire. Great scorers are able to do that. You know, a lot of times you see guys try to step into shots, and Pangos that time, no need to step into it, just catch and shoot. Brooks misses the free throw. Notre Dame's not been real good from the line when they've had chances. Pangos 
not at the free throw line right now, but that's the player that Sean's talking about. And Pangos, it was a magical night for him here. Just his second game as a collegiate player with the nine threes. Sparking a Gonzaga win against a Pac-12 school plan here. Here's Notre Dame for the Big East. Michigan State will be here next week. Butler's coming to the kennel as well. So you were talking about that non-conference schedule. A lot of times Gonzaga in those early years, they had to always go on the road. Now teams will come here to play the board. They've got the Battle of Seattle against Arizona. They're going to Illinois. They're, they've got Xavier on the road. And one of the best schedules in the country. Pangos again, not this time. Sacre just ripped it away out of bounds off Notre Dame. And, and you mentioned the schedule of the home games and why that is important because this team and this program has gotten to a level where they are one of the premier top 15 programs year in and year out. Thanks in large part to what Mark Hughes has been able to build here. So some of those games we were talking about, plus at Xavier, right now a top 15 team. What a great win that was against Vandy the other night at Vandy. Trying to have a huge year themselves with two Holloway. Sacre, spin move, and came up way short. Well, Notre Dame's doing some things better here, but still way too sloppy to make a real serious run. Pinned along that baseline again. Pangos has played well on the defensive end tonight. Cooley right against Sacre's score. He's had some success here in the second half, going down low on the block, and I, I don't see the same aggressiveness that I'd like to see out of Cooley though that we saw in the first couple of possessions. Even on that move, that was great, but he's catching the ball and he's just standing waiting for a guard to come take it out of his hands. He's got to be more assertive, demand the ball down low on the block. If you're a big and you want to get touches, you better post up hard and call for it. Harris bricks that three. Hustle play by Gary Bell Jr. Then a pass that goes off of Notre Dame and out of bounds. Sends us to the timeout. Gonzaga 49, Notre Dame 36. All right, Jonathan, thanks. Big lead for Gonzaga here at home against Notre Dame. Back here from the kennel. It has been a great night of college basketball out west. And UNLV team, Sean, with one of the signature wins in this early part of the season. They beat North Carolina and a very impressive win again tonight. Well, Mike Moser has really led the way. The UCLA transfer along with another UCLA transfer, Chase Stanback. Those two players have been so vital to the success for Coach Rice in his first season. Pangos immediately off the inbound. Tipped by Harris. Rebound Notre Dame. But Mike Mojo double-double with 34 points tonight against a real good UC Santa Barbara team. Led by Orlando Johnson, another real strong player out on the West Coast. Bob Williams' team got into the NCAA tournament the last couple of years, knocking off Long Beach State. Probably the favorite right now, along with the 49ers again in the Big West. They left Stockton wide open. So why not? And the problem when you fall behind by so much is you have to expend so much energy just to try to get back into the game. It was just about a minute and a half ago, two minutes, that this was a nine-point game. And ever since that point, Gonzaga has continued to push it. John Stockton's son, the nice little step back. And knocks it down. And he doesn't look for his shot all that often, but if you just give it to him, he's a good shooter. And Dad is pleased with the effort. David Stockton hit a lot of big shots last year. He had a half court heave in one of the games that you and I were here on that knocked it down going to the break. But he, he hit a lot of big shots down the stretch, especially in the WCC tournament. Good offensive possession from Notre Dame, and they convert a three-point play. So the Fighting Irish are trying to hang in despite all the sloppiness. Marquise Carter rejected, and he was out of bounds when he got the ball back there. So that goes as a Bulldogs turnover. Great help side defense, good rotation over by Knight to get the block shot. Carter drives the middle. Knight does a great job blocking it. Carter's foot was still out of bounds when he reached back in to grab it. Knight and Cooley for the Fighting Irish in this second half have done some good work. Aaron Grant tried to go back door but didn't have a handle on the basketball. Spent plenty of time on the shot clock. And the sophomore, Jaron Grant. Really a freshman, didn't play at all last year. 
redshirt year for him. Now up and under move. Connaughton could not finish. Stockton, nifty pass to Bell. Will he shoot it again? Not this time. He was thinking about it. I think if Elias Harris would have tossed it to him and immediately cut down, that would have cleared out enough space for him to be comfortable to knock down that shot. But I think good decision. You've got a lead. You're under 10 minutes to go here. No need to force up a shot from the outside. Poor pass by Marquise Carter, but they'll call a reach around foul against Notre Dame. Thursday night, the HTC Big East SEC Challenge will begin with a doubleheader on ESPN2. St. John's and the number one Kentucky Wildcats at 7.30 Eastern, then at 9.30 Eastern. Georgetown and Alabama, HTC Big East SEC Challenge on ESPN2 Thursday night. ACC Big Ten Challenge a little lopsided in favor of the Big Ten. Big Ten showing well against the ACC and Marquise Carter for three. Good rebound for Cooley. Dominating performance really overall by the Big Ten. How about the Buckeyes against Duke? That performance it really showed the difference. I mean, you go, Duke has got off to a great start. You know, winning Maui was a sensational effort. Great game against Kansas, but Tyshawn Taylor doesn't turn the ball over 11 times in that game. Good chance Kansas wins the Maui invitation. Aaron Kraft doesn't turn the ball over that much, takes care of it, knows how to find his teammates, and that made a big difference in that contest. Long two for Joey Brooks. Big Ten ends up winning that challenge for the third consecutive year and by a pretty lopsided margin. Sam Dower gets a touch on the low block. Spinning middle, the help came, but a reach in foul. Growth and development as a player. And one area that Sam Dower needs to continue to improve is having the confidence to go to his right hand. He is a left handed post presence. The scouting report is now out because he had such a successful second half of last year where teams know they can shade him and help to that side. He's going to have a difficult time scoring. And I think that's been a difference in the early stage of this season versus when he came on strong in the middle late part of January a year ago. Well, that's a good point. The guy pegged as a real breakout candidate so far kind of slow going. Stockton another three. Double screen, out of bounds underneath, Stockton wide open. Every time the Fighting Irish get a little closer, there's an answer for the Zags. A foul, and it'll be Scott Martin going to the free throw line. We're going to see Stockton run off a double screen in this direction. He gets the first one. Here comes the second one by Hart. Atkins didn't really fight too hard to get through it. And that gave him enough space to knock it down. David Stockton, sophomore from right here in Spokane. Another game where he's given his team a boost. You know who has not given a boost to the Irish tonight? Scott Martin. And it has been a struggle all night long. He has yet to make a field goal. He has yet to make a free throw. And this is a guy without Tim Abermidas out on the floor. He needs to pick up some of the scoring pace. He's their other senior. He's their other veteran leader and that's his first point he had been 0 from the field 0 from the free throw line the guy averaging 12 points five rebounds a game hard on the bench with four fouls now an offensive foul illegal screen against Sam Dower a lot of whistles in this game two teams that came in amongst the leaders in all of college basketball in fewest fouls committed. A lot of fouls piling up now in this one. Next foul against Gonzaga, the Fighting Irish will be in the bonus. Was still better than eight minutes to go. Well, Connaughton, the freshman, elevated and had nowhere to go with the ball. Stockton spins through the contact. Carter to the bucket off the glass. Notre Dame will go back. They'll watch this film. Maybe even on the way home tonight on their charter, and they're going to look at and see glaring mistakes. Uh, you know, simple things that you cannot afford to have happen. You jump in the air, you make a bad pass. 
you get a number situation for Gonzaga. They push it ahead, and Carter finishes. Spend the Zags from start to finish so far. 7.46 left.